I'm also going to be recording a what I eat in a day vegetarian style because I got some things from Trader Joe's so it's actually going to be easy. I'm going to do different segments but it's just ideas of what you could technically eat as a vegetarian. So I'm going to make avocado toast on two English muffins so like one cut in half and then I'm also going to have um, two eggs on top of that. And then before that, while I'm making it, I just finished the gym and it's about, I think, 2.30 now. And I'm going to have a protein smoothie first thing just to make sure that I have my protein. And that will be my first meal of the day post-gym. And before this, I just had a large black coffee from Tim Hortons and lots of water when I was at the gym. Sick. I set up the tripod and I'm basically going to just make the protein smoothie first. So I'm going to use my cake pot protein that I'm going to get from my newly organized and created pantry. And then I'm going to use half a frozen banana. I'm going to use a bunch of spinach that I haven't used yet. And then some cold water because I hate milk. It's like my deepest fear. So this is the cake pot protein from PE Science. And Stephanie Buttermore, she's currently doing like an all-in challenge. She promotes that and honestly it is really good but I paid a shitload of customs for it. So I'm just gonna set up my smoothie. Basically I'm use, I have, I basically take ripe bananas, cut it in half and put them in the freezer and let it freeze and that's my ice. I kind of help the blender a bit by cutting it in half, putting it there, put these bad boys back. I always put the water first because then the protein has something to go to. So I put the scoop there. So I have everything in there but the spinach. I have big bag of spinach that I bought that I haven't been using. It's actually not as bad as I thought. Oh. Okay, so I literally filled it up with spinach. I don't know if you can see that. Next, I just add a little bit more water just to help bring it down and then I'm going to turn it on. Can you still see? Okay, I'll bring it over. I do crush ice first using my KitchenAid mixer and then when I feel like most of the banana or it does that, I do liquid aside. When it gets to that green color, I stop. Good with it. That's good. This. Wait. And then, while I make this avocado toast for VJ and some guacamole, I'm going to drink this. That's good. I have a little bit. Like, it makes this whole cup. And I still have some in here, but I'm just gonna put this in the fridge for now and quickly drink this. And I have to use a straw. So I just stir it around one more time. Okay, so now I'm going to make the avocado toast with two eggs each, and I'm making two servings of it. So I'm gonna use two English muffins that I'm gonna toast one at a time. I'm gonna use two avocados and make guacamole, and I'll show you how I track it. I know it's considered avocado toast, but I think just plain avocado is kind of boring. So I'm going to make it into kind of like a guacamole uh, using two avocados, garlic, some onions. Um, we each get two eggs for each side of the English muffin. And then I'm going to try out Trader Joe's everything but the bagel seasoning on top. And I'm having my protein smoothie that I made a few seconds ago. And I'm using my T-Fal um, non-stick fry pan that I got from Kane Tire. See how we ruined it by not, you're not supposed to clean it with like a scrub, but I guess we did by accident. Whoopsies. All right, so step one, we're gonna multitask because it's key here, especially if you're trying to make two servings at the same time and make sure it's fresh. So I'm gonna start by putting this in the toaster, but I'm not gonna toast it just yet. I wanna get the avocado down. And then once I start making the eggs, I will toast the English muffin because you don't want this to be cold by the time this is done, you know what I mean? And then the last step would be this. And if I had done the eggs first, I don't have enough time to make the like avocado part of it, you know? And the eggs really take a few seconds. It's honestly not that hard to make a sandwich. You just have to be able to multitask. All right, step two, I just chopped up the onion really small. I could have used green onion, but I was too lazy to organize the fridge. I'm not at that stage of my life yet. <clears throat> this is some garlic. I just cut it up again really small, and then I ran a big knife through it. And now, before I add these, because I don't know if this is too much, 
Then I'm wondering if there's ever too much onion or garlic. But anyways, I'm going to just mash these up a little bit. I'm going to use this, which is the masher for the pesto mortar. mortar. And then I'm going to mash it up. And then I'm going to probably add both of these. I'm going to add some salt, some pepper, and cilantro and lime, I think. Okay, quick change of plans. I was originally trying to make like a guacamole style by putting it in there, but when I went to try to mash it, it wasn't as ripe as I thought they were, so that's okay. I'll make it that version tomorrow. So instead, I'm going to improvise. I'm still going to use lime. I'm still going to add a sprinkle of cilantro on top, and I'll just show you how I assemble it when the time comes. All right, so I just cracked two eggs. Apparently, you I usually used to crack it on the edge of this or like the edge of here, but apparently it's better to crack it on a flat surface. Um, and then I tried to use eggshells to like um, trap the egg from separating and becoming big. Even this is a little too big for a English muffin, but I would say that you would be bougie and eat this with a fork and a knife. Okay, so I took it off the heat like almost immediately as soon as the egg whites formed and I put a lid on it. I have a plate ready. I'm just waiting for the English muffin to toast. I started that when I started cooking the egg. I also salt and peppered the egg and then you just work really quickly and I'm just gonna assemble. Okay, there's some lime juice on my uh, thing. I'm gonna wipe it down in a second, but you take avocado and I basically fanned it out. I put it on straight and then I use a spoon to like mush it down because it's riper riper because it's more ripe and you can't um, squish it like you want to and then I squeezed lemon on top and then now I'm going to just literally sprinkle some of this which is garlic that I minced up I'm going to use a fork and a knife to eat it so it doesn't really matter I did some of that which is red onions kind of like a little messy like you're pretend chef but you're not pretending this, this is real life i'm going to add some salt and pepper because you want to flavor at each stage even though i salt and peppered the egg as well and then i'm going to put it all together and show you the final result Uno momento. so that's the final product i kind of forgot to take a picture or a video but it was delicious so next up i'm going to try the trader joe's cauliflower gnocchi i've never actually tried gnocchi ever before let alone trader joe's time so hopefully because i'm trying this one it's going to be really really good um i asked my friend how she makes it and usually she adds like a pesto sauce or a pasta sauce but i don't really want to go for pasta vibe today i'm going to kind of put together kind of like a bowl with a salad i think and then have Quaker Oats for dessert. But uh, I'm trying to finish eating by eight o'clock, so we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna probably eat the whole thing, I think, is, um, it's per one cup or 140 gram serving size. And for say 140 gram serving size, the total fats is three grams, total carbs is 22 grams, and the total protein is two. For the full bag, it's five. So it's not very high in protein, but I was thinking I could have added like black beans or something, but, for now, I'm just going to eat it like this. Okay, so this is the cauliflower gnocchi. I was kind of afraid of overcrowding the pan, but this is the whole bag. So I'm like, eh, I'll take a shot. Once I get it nice and crispy on this side, I'm not going to touch it right now. I'm going to flip it over to the other side, get that nice and, nice and good. And then I'll probably turn down the heat and cover it so that it can get crispy on the outside and soft on the inside. Okay, so I'm getting a nice color on them. But the only thing is, is that... It's not all all the way around, but I think that's more of a pan problem. I think it's more of a pan problem versus and like using a small burner because my mom is cooking here, so I have least priority. But still making it work. I'm not sure what I want to eat it with, but it does taste good. I sampled it. I'm just gonna cook it for a little longer because I'm still in the middle of cleaning my fridge, so I'm multitasking. All right, that is the cauliflower gnocchi. It actually tastes really good. Honestly, I probably could eat it by itself. I don't know if I would do it in a pasta because it's not, I feel like it would become mushy and I don't want it to be mushy. It would, I'm trying to think what it tastes like. It tastes like potatoes basically, but um, what would I eat it with? I don't know. I still don't know what I would eat it with. I wouldn't dip it in anything. Okay. I took out the cauliflower gnocchi. I've been munching on it and it actually tastes really, really good. I decided I am going to do a pasta. I'm just going to make a quick red sauce. And I'm assuming my family is going to eat some with me, so I'm going to track the full thing, but uh, and I'll show you how I track the tomato sauce and all that stuff. Honestly, I was going to be really lazy with this, but the fact that I've come this far, I've sautéed onions, some green pepper, and garlic. I just added the garlic so it doesn't burn. You can see that the onions are already a translucent color, but I want to just infuse the flavor of the garlic, which I can already smell. Then I'm going to add a little bit of pasta sauce 
and throw it all together. Also, I don't track olive oil that I use for this. Even um, marinades, I don't track them. I talk about that in a different video, but more or less, I figured those will offset with the cardio that I do because I don't track cardio either. And to me, it's like, what's sustainable long-term? Like, I don't wanna weigh out olive oil and all that shit, like too bad, you know? But again, if in the future I wasn't losing weight, I would adjust accordingly. Okay, so next I'm gonna add um, the sauce and this bean medley. I honestly, I'm just going through my cupboards and trying to find what I have. And I have extra calories to play with. So half a cup is 130 calories, one gram of fat, 23 grams of carbs, and eight grams of protein. Next up, I added the tomato sauce. I added three half cup servings. So one and a half cups. And the flavor is ragu, original mushroom pasta sauce. And I'm about to add the beans next, which is why it seems like it's very saucy, but it's not when the beans come. These carbs are, or calories, is for half a cup, it's 70 calories. It is two grams of fat, 12 grams of carbs, and two grams of protein. So times those numbers by three for what I use. So anytime I use uh, canned kidney beans, I always wash and rinse them so I can just remove some of the starch. And I'm gonna measure out one half cup up the sauce right now. I tasted it and it tastes a little like pasta saucy. You wanna just let it sit for a bit simmer so that you know it can bring down some of that flavor. And then I might even add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce for an added acidic flavor. And then I'm just gonna put it all together and add in some nutritional yeast on top and call it a day. Actually super excited. Oh, I am gonna add spinach as soon as it gets to the level that I want it to be. Cause we all know spinach like shrivels away to nothing basically. Okay, so this is the Worcestershire sauce that I'm using. I just got it from Food Basics. Um, it's five calories. I don't bother tracking it to me. That's like irrelevant and too small of a thing to track. Um, I'm just gonna add a little bit. Okay, just that much. And then on this side, I have the spinach. Well, I'm going to literally add a lot. That's not enough. Because so this is my only way of getting greens. I didn't want a salad based on the texture that this ended up being. So I'm literally going to add one more handful, see what it comes up to, and decide if I want to add more. And then last clip, you should be able to see it all put together. See what I mean? If you're patient enough, it will come down. I'm just going to season one more time with salt, pepper, see what it needs. And then, yeah, we're done. Great. So I've been letting the gnocchi sit on a paper towel so that it can stay crispy. We're going to just dump it all in. And now I will mix it up and fold it in, not mix it. Fold it in gently so that you don't break it apart. All right. That is the beautiful final product. I did split it into three portions, although I tracked it as if I'm the only person eating it. But you see how adding vegetables just brings color to your life? and even the beans, it makes it really filling. If I ate all of this by myself, I would be so full. And since today's my first day of intermittent fasting, I'm not gonna um, force myself to eat more than I want to. And then I'm gonna add this Trader Joe's nutritional yeast, just to try it out. The calories for this, per one tablespoon, 20 calories, so I will track that. It is three grams of protein, two grams of carbs, and zero grams of fat. Okay, so that's with the nutritional yeast on top. It looks kind of weird like that, but it smells pretty good and I'm excited to dig in. Okay, so the last step of this video is going to just be going over my ending macros and my ending calories. So I'm just on the desktop version of my fitness pal and I recorded this video today and I just finished eating and chilling for a bit. So my goals were here, which is to hit 1755 calories, 154 grams of carbs, 49 grams of fat, and 160 grams of protein. That protein is obviously very high. My real goal of hitting protein is 120, ideally, but again, my main focus is to be in a calorie deficit and track my food because we all know the last couple of days I haven't been doing that. So what I've actually done is I ate almost 1,200 calories, 138 grams of carbs, 45 grams of fat, 60 grams of protein, and these are my remaining numbers. 562 calories, 16 grams of carbs, four grams of fat, and 116 grams of protein. Um, in terms of my food, so I started off with the cake pop protein smoothie that ended up being 173 calories. I don't track the spinach. I obviously don't track water, 16 grams of carbs, one gram of fat, 25 grams of protein. So that's not bad. And I have this protein smoothie regularly. And ideally I would like to have that first thing after I finish the gym. And that will be what I break my fast with around 1:30. I did that today, but it was a little later than 1:30. It was about 2:30. Then for, for my first real meal is my breakfast meal, which was a English muffin 
one English muffin with two eggs, one on each side, and then one avocado. So that was my higher calorie meal, which was 520 calories, 42 grams of carbs, 34 grams of fat, and 17 grams of protein. And then next up, we have what I had for lunch, which was my dinner, and that was the Trader Joe's gnocchi with my kind of pasta thing I made. So the Trader Joe's gnocchi, it technically has 2.5 cups in a bag. I put one and a half and pretended that I gave uh, half a cup to my mom and half a cup to my dad or to my other family members. And then I put, originally I did three half cups of sauce, so one and a half cups, but I put one cup just to overestimate because again, I shared with other people. Same thing with the beans. I kept it as a full amount. Again, I don't think that's accurate. I think it probably had a little bit less than that just because I shared the portions and I was too lazy to make it like perfect. And then I did have one tablespoon of nutritional yeast. So altogether, I, again, I think I'm overshooting this just by a slight amount. 500 calories, 80 grams of carbs, 10 grams of fat, and 18 grams of protein. So again, not bad. And also, I'm not including any of the vegetables that I use, so they probably have more protein. And again, if I was still hungry, I would have had either some oatmeal or something else for protein, but I really didn't plan it perfectly. But this is just an example to show you that you can still eat healthy. I'm still very full. I would just be a little concerned about my protein numbers, so I would have to strategically plan a little bit better, which, I, again, I think anybody can do that. So... Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to try to do other what I eat in a day, trying to hit certain people's dietary preferences, whether that's vegetarian, vegan, pescatarian, meatitarian. I don't think that's the right word. But anyways, you get what I'm saying. But I appreciate you watching. See you guys next time. Mwah. Bye.